Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I'm Miranda, back with you here to do another fun mandala. This one kind of is tailored more towards beginners or people who are just looking for an easy mandala to do quickly in like half an hour, hour or so. So this is my web page, but I am actually on the photography section because I just wanted to show you a lot of people are asking me where I get my stones <laughs> and as you can see, Lake Erie provides. So, if I am unable to find them on the coastline here, I also have gotten them from Maine and Vermont and places we travel. Um, however, landscaping companies are more than happy usually to accommodate. Sometimes it's $5 for a five gallon bucket. They even let me pick out the stones I want. And there are also places online um, that I've worked with in the past who sell stones online as well as making your own happy doppy doppy who happy dotting company Angela over there makes amazing molds um, for your own homemade handmade stones as well so I just wanted to quickly touch on that um, this is going to kind of incorporate some beginner aspects talking about the tools which paints to use um, and then we're just going to do a fun little mandala stone, which I haven't done a, a small natural stone in a very long time. So let's get moving on here. So this is a fun pastime for my husband and children and I. We go and walk the beaches and show each other the finds that we have. And so these are about the kind of stones that I like to grab, just ones that are pretty circular, especially for the mandalas. Circular, smooth. I try to not have porous ones just because the paint soaks in um, and it makes it a little harder, but about this size, a couple inches, one to three inches. They're super fun to do and it's fun to create a little pocket size pointillism to carry around a piece of art with you. A lot of times we put magnets on the back of these, we give them as gifts. Um, I don't know, I made ornaments out of them at Christmas time, so there's a lot you can do with this, and it's sometimes nice just to perk up someone's day. Alright, since this kind of turned into a video that's more tailored towards beginners, I'm just going to do a quick chat about tools. So in this video, we are going to be using dotting styluses. These are dotting styluses. They have a little ball on the end. You just dip them in the paint and dot. Now, there's a little caveat to this. Years ago, I noticed that my angled paintbrush was working better for me, so I decided to bend all these tools for my classes that I was teaching. Um, it makes it easier, we hold it like a pencil, it makes it easier to see where you're dotting, and um, all around it just seemed like it was less frustrating. So. I make these, I put them in my shop, I don't know how long I've been doing it for, for years, but I just find them more helpful and that is what I'm going to use in this little tutorial for this fun mandala. So I just wanted to quickly go over those for you guys. Really it's um, fairly simple, just take your color palette, put some paint of water-based acrylics, water-based acrylics, so you can see they're more fluid. It's kind of like yogurt, like that. And then you're just literally going to press the tool to the surface of whatever you are dotting. And that one's got a little goop in it from my last one. But it just kind of gives you a quick overview of the dotting tools. And they are bent because I bend them. They don't come that way. Um, but I do have them available in my shop if you are looking for them. Or I also have a video where you can try to bend your own with... Because I'm just trying to make these available to people. I'm not trying to like make money off of this just for fun. I want people to enjoy it. So this is like um, an adjustable plier. And I just grab the end and I bend them. And I show it in a video. They will break the ball ends off, so be careful. But uh, if you're looking to do that on your own, there's a video on that in my list of videos as well. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna go with our middle stone here. So I'm gonna get these other ones out of the way. And this one, I'm gonna just kind of pick to which side is a little flatter. It is fairly round, but it is about 
almost exactly two inches here. So that way you can kind of gauge the design size um, for picking out your stone or somewhere else. So I'm just showing you here. If you don't have a measuring tape, your thumb from the end to your knuckle, weird fact, is around an inch. So just to kind of gauge it that way, then you'll have about the same size that I am using for my design today. So I obviously, this is nature, it's not a perfect circle. And I very often just kind of eyeball the center. But what you can do is take a compass. This is a compass. And I'm just going to eyeball the center for this. But then I'm going to draw a circle on my stone. And that will kind of delineate the borders that we can stay in and give us kind of a framework to do a symmetrical mandala here. And then also it'll have a black painted background on this one so it'll be easier should something happen while I'm painting on the background I can always just use the background color paint to dab over it to just get rid of that spot if I need to so, so I'm just gonna take this here and we're gonna paint the center circle black today I've used other colors you can use any color you want it just changes how much contrast you have with your paint design um, and the background. So if you do metallics, you could do yellow, it glows through depending on the colors you're using. So I encourage you to try and experiment with that kind of thing. It's super fun. So I'm just going to grab a soft flat brush here and our black paint. And we're just going to paint this circle black so we have a bit of a background to guide us. Alright, so here is our stone ready to roll and now I kept my compass the same size so I'm just going to grab the point on the outer edge of the circle, a couple spots on the circle, and that gives me my center. This is the actual center of the circle. I'm going to go with the largest dotting tool I have in this set, which is about 3 millimeter ball stylus. That's the green one. It's almost always the green one in the set. And we're going to grab cobblestone in the Deco Art Americana line here for our center dot. Let's so see, we just dipped it in the paint and I'm just pressing it down in the center to start off our mandala. Next I'm going to grab tropical blue and the white one which is about just under one millimeter on the large end. And then we're going to go and we're going to make a plus sign here. So I'm putting one in front of me, one above, and then we're going to go left and right, just like you would an addition sign, a plus sign. And it's just on either side of that central circle that we made already. And that's going to help us with our symmetry, because the next dots you put down are going to be in between those two, three, four, sorry, on the diagonal. Just like that. So then you end up with eight dots and that starts your pattern. Okay, so this is just quickly from the side for you all to see. The angled dot tool is just, I'm just pressing it literally right touching the surface of the stone. There's no tricks. Just literally dip it in the paint, press it on here just like you were doing an ink stamp. And this is just the side angle so you can see the placement. Alright, so next up I'm going to grab my citron green. And what we're going to do is in between the blue dots that we just put down, I'm going to use the number two blue stylus. I say number two just because it's about two millimeters. So the citron green. And then this is the second largest one in the set. And we're just going to dip and dot in between each of those blue ones that we've already put down. So I'm just going in between 
each one where they meet. On this turntable, all the things I use in this video I will put in the description for you guys to check them out if you want to get one of your own. It's one of the best investments I've made, especially for the small item painting, because you can just spin it and paint. Okay, and again from the side, you can see it's the two millimeter. And then I'm just dipping and then literally touching it to the surface here. This one is a little more fluid, so I'm not holding it on the surface as long because the paint will spread. But as you hold it there, the paint will put it into it. It'll go into a larger dot. So if it is a little more fluid, it will go bigger. But that way you can see from the side, it's just the same idea. Alright, so next up for our thing here is Night Sky. Now this is a multi-surface paint. I'm going to use the largest dotting tool, so this is the 3mm. And the satin multi-surface paints, I just want to let you know it will look a little plumpier and a little shinier. So these ones are great if you are doing um, ceramic mugs and you want to have them cure so you don't have to put a varnish on them at the end. These are self-sealing. So no matter what you put them on, pavers, um, coasters, they will self-seal and you can even seal them quicker by putting them in the oven. So there's instructions on the back for those to use for that. But I just really like this color and I wanted to use it for this so I am just going to grab it for my purposes here today. <laughs> but it is a multi-surface. So I am going for a larger dot size, but I didn't want to incorporate any other tools for you guys today, just because I want to stick with the one set. Um, so you can see I'm pushing the paint around in a circle. We've all drawn a circle. You can do it, I promise. Just take the paint, push it around into a circle. And if it gets out of control, wipe it off, put some black paint down, try it again. It's really just about being relaxed and enjoying doing this. Don't stress. Okay, again, here is our lovely side angle. So again, it's the night sky, the three millimeter. You can see it's a little bit thicker. And I'm just pushing it around. And this one's a little thicker. And this is where people ask, how do you get the plumpy dots? So some of the multi-surfaces are These thicker. Are great to use also putting multiple layers of paint on like it will give you the plumper dots. And, and you need then it there's to also seal. something called a gel medium. Gel medium will help you thicken up your paints, but still keeping them fluid enough, fluid enough to work with. Um, and they will come out plumpy like this. Plumpy? Plumper. Plumper? <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Stay a little thicker, which this will happen too nice, if you find right the gel there. mediums. It almost nice looks like a cookie. Your thinner paints, it'll thicken it up a little like this. You can see too that little kind of string after you just let it drop down in. All right, so bright green is next, and I really love this green. I'm going to use the number three again, but you'll see the difference too in size once we put this next to the night sky one. It's not going to be as big as the night sky dot. I'm still using the same tool, but we have to push it around to get it into that larger size. And this looks mintier on the screen, the green, but it's more of a, just like a regular, regular green, like a Kelly green. I'm not sure what's going on with the coloring here, but we'll make it work. <laughs> Plus we're going to add top dots to it afterwards and that will kind of tone it down a little so this ends up being more of a background color once you add the dots to the top of here. And so we are really just putting this around the edge too, so this is helping to kind of disguise that black border of the background that we put on. And so don't get stressed because you can even see on mine, some of them are 
completely in the black area, some are overlapping the black area. It's, it's a little off center and that's something with working with natural stones that it's just gonna happen. So give yourself grace, just take a breath. No one's ever gonna notice. No one's coming to count how many dots or how far out you did, did the paint. There we go. All right, so you can see how they are plumper and they are not all right on the line. But after we start adding some additional things to this, it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna go with the smallest tool in this group now. And while these green ones are still wet, I'm actually gonna steal from them. So I'm gonna grab some of the paint from these dots and then I'm going to do a ring around each dot so this one is small. I'm going to try to just only use these tools. I do have another tool called an etcher that helps make little dots, but I'm going to dip every single time. And this reason for this is that I want the dots more uniform. So rather than hearing, you'll hear people say we're walking the dots. This is not walking the dots. You're just dipping and dotting so they are the same size because you're loading the same amount of paint on each time that you dip and dot. Walking the dots is a different story. You'll start at the top. We'll do a ring of those too, but it's starting at the top and then you let the paint wa um, walk off the tool. No, <laughs> wear off the tool as you work your way around and the dots get progressively smaller just because there's less paint on the tool. But if you're in the Facebook groups and stuff, you'll hear about people saying walk the dots. I'm not really sure who coined that term, but it is very creative. And so around each of these dots, we're just going to put one ring of the same color bright green and just tuck as many as we can down and around. Another thing, don't be stressed. Oh, down the right side I have eight dots. Down the left side I only have six. No one's going to count them. This is art. It's just supposed to be enjoyable. Enjoy your painting time. Don't get caught up in statistics of your stone. I have eight, I have ten. <laughs> it's going to look wonderful. And the more you practice, I promise, I promise, promise, the more you practice, the easier and faster you are going to get better at this and you're going you're gonna to look back someday and be like, what was I stressed about? It's so much fun. It's so relaxing. Just enjoy doing it. Feel like that's something that we just need to be reminded of every day to just kind of slow down and enjoy something like this. Everything is so fast-paced, especially YouTube, social media. Everybody wants it quick, quick, quick. And this is going to be a quick stone anyway. It's a small design, so you're going to have it finished up fairly fast as it is. This video is not going to be that long. We're just finishing up the ring. And then something I like to do with my stones is kind of create the flow with the color. So I'm going to talk about that as we go through as well. So in choosing my color palette, I chose kind of like earthy blues and greens. And so what you kind of want to do is make the color flow throughout the piece. So now that I have that green out on the outside, I actually am going to bring it in here and do a couple dots of that light green just under the night sky, the large night sky dot. And then with our other colors, we're going to bring them out. So like the cobblestone we'll bring out later, that citron green we'll bring out later to the outer edges of the stone, but it's it helps create flow in your work so that you don't get 500 different colors and it looks haphazard or chaotic. It helps a flow with your design. Okay, so now 
we're going to grab the Williamsburg blue because I think that night sky is dry enough to put a couple of top dots on there. And this Williamsburg blue is kind of like a grayish slate blue. And I'm going to use the number two top dotter to just put some top dots on here because we've used the number three, remember, to make the night sky. So we want to go a little bit smaller for the top dots because it's going to help kind of create that um, so it looks like you'll have a background color. So you can see a little bit peeking out around the edge of each of these. And so for each one you'll just get progressively smaller as you go. Okay, so I just want to show how plump these look from the side. Do you see the difference? They're almost 3D, and that's because we're layering the extra on top. Okay, here we are back with our top view. We're going to go with some foliage green, and with the foliage we're going to do a ring around the outside of those large green ones where we put the small green dots, we're going to follow the small green dots with the foliage green. So I'm going to go grab the small stylus again. And this one's pretty small so I have to make sure I get the right amount of paint loaded on here. And now I'm doing what I was talking about with walking the dots. So I'm dipping it once or maybe twice depending on how much I get on there. And then you're just going to let the paint run off See, I'm too small there, so i got to put a little more on. I'm going to let the paint run off the tool as you work your way around. And it's going to make the dots progressively smaller just naturally. So one thing I do want to say with spacing, don't try to cram in there. Don't try to cram more in there. You'll see we'll just come around and we'll meet it up as far as we can meet it up without shoving other dots in there. So right there I have to stop, I stop. I can't go all the way around, then I don't. But it's going to already have that green color carried on in from the other ring that we did around the other dot. So same in over here. I might not be able to bring it all the way down around on both sides, but I can get it in here like this. And then I come around this side and I won't go all the way down in because you don't want to overlap the dots, you don't want to make it look too crowded, but you just want that color in that area. That's one of the things too with um, the history with pointillism. There are people, they used to make amazing paintings with just dots and not mandalas, just tons of little, little dots in the, in the spaces. And, still tons of people are doing that today so you're just basically using the dots to get that color down in that zone without crowding it too much and that's gonna give um, that section that color and work work with your piece thinking too much while I'm talking here <laughs> all right so on this side you can see I can actually tuck a whole nother row down in here and that's fine. You guys know I didn't, I wasn't able to fit it on some because you're watching the video, but someone who picks up the stone or sees it as a magnet on a fridge or is holding it in their hand is feeling the dots. Some of my little guys with sensory issues just like to have them for like a worry stone and just hold on to them to feel. But see, I can fit two rings there too. So spacing is not always perfect. I am not perfect. We are not perfect. See, and there I go. I'm going to make a mess. So here's a quick way. Clean up. <laughs> Don't stress. Yes, it's on the natural stone and we can't back up the background color. So we are going to scrape off all the excess paint we can with a tool. This is just a silicone tool. And baby wipes are your friend. Just grab a pack of baby wipes and scrub away. And then because this is on the natural stone, I can't paint over it with my background. So don't stress though, it's not the end of the world. 
you can grab a pair of scissors, your compass. Um, I'm actually going to use my etcher. The pointy side of the etcher tool is metal. And I'm just going to kind of scrape off a little bit where the paint has gotten green on here so that it's not noticeable. Because once we put the next ring down, you're not going to notice it anyway. It's going to be okay. Alright, so here is my etcher. And I'm just going to kind of scrape away some of the excess paint that is still showing on there. But natural stones aren't perfect anyway. There's going to be spots, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be all sorts of marks. Don't stress, just work with it. It's going to be okay. So I'm just going to wipe it a little bit more here with the baby wipe and then we are going to let it be. Go on, go ahead and start that other ring around and it will cover it up so you won't ever see it again. It'll be all right. So back with our foliage green and the dotting tool. I think what happened is I just got a dry gloop in there that plopped on there. So I'm just going to tuck this last section in here. Okay, so now I'm just kind of looking at it to decide. The green looks super bright, so I definitely am going to have to tone that down with some top dots. But first I'm going to take this light avocado and ordinarily, you, you see like the mandalas go from light to dark. They have like an ombre pattern. So with the rings, a lot of times I'll just go light paint to dark paint or dark to light and then white on the outside even. But I think I'm going to go dark, light, and then this avocado dark here on the outside. And then we'll just tuck it down in as far as it will let us go here. It's not going to go down in between the dots. You can see too, sometimes with muscle memory I get in the habit of just heading in one direction. So I just keep going to the right for these. Which, if you do that and you just stay on the right side, it'll make a fun little spiral design. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to finish it off and go left afterwards. But sometimes you just get going in the same direction, muscle memory, and actually get in a rhythm, and it goes pretty nicely. So rhythm. I just want to mention something about the algorithms really quick. Um, I guess YouTube, I'm not really sure what is going on. Just like all social media and what has been happening these days, they don't keep showing your stuff if nobody engages with it. So even if you just put a little heart or a smiley face or say where you're from or where you're watching from or your favorite color, just something in the comments. It'll help out the artists that you're watching here on YouTube um, to help their channels keep going. Uh, here we go. I'll go left now. I don't know how we ended up in the bottom corner. I'm moving it all over my desk here, but at least you can still see I'm just doing the other side here. That's probably the bottom right hand corner for yours. <clears throat> All right, so debating if I want to do the avocado in the center of the bright green or if I want to go with the foliage, which is the lighter green. And I think I'm going to opt for the foliage, but they're still a little wet.
We'll see how it goes here. All right, so I've got the number two blue one. So it's just a little bit smaller than the size three green that we put the green dots down with. And they are actually staying, so it's drier than it looked. That's one of the things, it's hard to be patient sometimes with rounds of dots and doing them close to each other. You don't want the paint to bleed into one another. So I have other stones that I work on at the same time or another piece or I walk away and come back to it because Lord knows my house is super busy and I have plenty of other things I could be doing. <laughs> All right, so now I need to carry that tropical blue out because it just doesn't feel right for some reason, the green feels like it's a little overwhelming in that area so I'm gonna take the tropical blue and we'll use the number two again the blue one and I think I'm just gonna put a dot in between each of these elements here so I will say this has been sitting in my palette for a little bit so if it looks a little tacky it's just because it's been air drying here for a bit and sometimes that will not form a perfect dot or circle because the paint has gotten thicker. So just a, a tip to keep in mind um, if it starts to get a little goopy and it's feeling challenging to work with then you just need to pour a little bit more in a separate place on your palette. I wouldn't recommend mixing them in together unless you have like a thinning medium and then you can mix the medium in with the thicker paint to thin it down a little. Okay, so now I think I'm going to try to connect the green because we have this space in between the larger blue dots and I'm going to use the citron green and just put two little ones in here to kind of give it that connection to the greens on the outer edge. So again, it's about connecting your colors. It really helps with the flow of each mandala. It kind of looks like spokes of a wheel. <laughs> so now I just usually take a look at it and see, and then I look on my screen, and I'm thinking what I need to do is that cobblestone we put in the center. We'll put just some three little dots on the outside of our green element here just to kind of carry it out. So it's just one big dot at the top for the pinnacle and then two little ones on either side. And I'm using the yellow one which is kind of the, it's just the regular sized end on the yellow one. this way too if you're looking at it you can kind of see how it carries out the cobblestone it draws your eye to the center and the outside kind of at the same time because it's that lighter color contrast to all the other ones that we put down the blues and greens so really it's just a visual visual thing and you'll get used to it you'll get used to your color choices you'll probably have some favorites that you gravitate towards So I'm looking at it and thinking I might even put top dots of the cobblestone on our blue here. So just using the yellow dot art tool, I'm just going to top off because it is smaller because we started with the three size three tool, green to blue to now the one of the yellows. So the size, if you just go down in size, then you have the smaller dots and then you have the progression so it looks like the background. But also when you look at it from the side, you'll have that 3D look. And the kids love it. You can feel how bumpy it is after it dries. I just give it one last look 
and then I look on my screen. Sometimes I'll take a picture of it and I put it on my camera to take a look at to see if I should do anything else. But I think that is good. We're going to stop there. But I'll, if you hang on in this video, I'll show you how to varnish it as well. I use Liquitech Professionals. I'll show you the bottle. They did come out with a new one. But it'll seal the stone and you can put it outside and I just had to wait for my stone to dry. Well, I let it dry probably a couple hours before coming back to it for the varnish. So this is the varnish I have currently. I had a huge bottle. I'm still using it up. It's last for a long time, at least a year I've had this. Um, they did change it now to this acrylic finishing. It's the same thing. It's still varnish, acrylic varnish. They do have it in matte, they have it in gloss and satin. Oh, sorry, hang on here. Um, but yeah, they still are UV resistant. I know you guys who have been with me, you hear me tell the story about how I hit the rocks with our lawnmower one year that were in the garden and it didn't even chip the paint. There's never been any fading, it protects it from the sun. I, I love this product. And I use it almost all the time on my canvases, stones, wood, you name it. I just take a sponge brush and then you have to kind of work with it a little quickly. I think it's clogged here. I'm going to have to clean it out. But um, you work with it quickly. Don't overwork it. It'll get foggy. So I put some in the brush and then I put some on the stone usually and then just kind of swipe it around quickly. Personally, I don't seal the bottoms unless I'm going to put them outside for sure just because I don't want to waste product and I do like the natural stone showing through but you can varnish the whole thing you just have to wait for it to dry then flip it do the other side so you can see I'm doing this quickly this is real time it's not, not any, none of this is fast forwarded and then I just want to catch any drips that have fallen down around the sides just to kind of neaten it up Sorry, I'm pulling it off the screen here. <laughs> I like to see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's hard to keep it under the camera, especially with these smaller pieces. But you can see the gloss that that gives. It'll, it pops your colors, everything afterwards. So if it was looking matte, it is not anymore. And we put magnets on it and everything. They're great little gifts. I made, Like I said, I made ornaments one year. So that is a fun, quick little stone to just have some peaceful time and end up with a creation at the end. So I just want to thank you all for watching this today. I hope you enjoyed doing this stone. I want to shout out to all the veterans who have been watching me for years. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again. There's our little stone. And then I also want to shout out to the newbies, beginners, whatever you consider yourself. Just starting out, enjoying this new art form. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Don't feel downhearted about things. Don't get downtrodden. Don't let bad comments on the internet sway you from this. Don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> Enjoy this. It is so much fun and it's going to give you years of enjoyment, I promise. All right, happy painting.